nicely placed, that pink in the open. And if he could win this opening frame with one visit, it would send a message out to Judd. Judd only missed the, the first shot. I mean, Photo. the only ball he could leave the way he played it was the one that he uh, attempted to pot. And on 41. that occasion, it did finish over the middle pocket, so this is the result. Yeah, they got an interesting head-to-head -head as well, these two, and he played on four occasions. It's currently 2-2, two -two, so... He won't be in total awe of the talents of Judd Trump, will Barry Hawkins. He's beaten him a couple of times before. He can do it again. He's taken these nicely so far. 46. Forty-seven. <clears throat> so this, the obvious red, then the one to 50. the right-hand side of the black and the loose red is potable in the middle. Also. Fifty-three. Just dropping the pink in and got the red on the right hand side, so that'll be next. He's taking these beautifully, Dennis, isn't he? Lovely touch. 59. And if he can knock this in and get nicely on the pink, it'll be the end of the opening frame. 60. If we're into 66. another cracking match here, where Barry has started. 67. Just looking at the scoreboard, but he's over the line, or the winning line at the moment. That makes absolutely certain. <laughs> well, hugely impressive, this. 73. First visit to the table with a chance. And he's won the frame off it. Very impressive indeed. 74. And if Judd Trump was in any doubt about how his opponent was going to be playing today, he's just found out. Excellent. And if that red next to the black is available, every 80. chance of a century break, and it does go. that red to keep running there. Eighty-eight. Eighty-nine. Pink's the better ball to get onto that final red. The standard this week has been absolutely stellar. 95. It really has. These boys really are good. Where to start a match. Fantastic break from Barry Hawkins. 
103. That's the 11th century in this year's Masters, or the 21st 105. century, I should say. 31's the record. One hundred and eight. One hundred and twelve. It has to be said, these tables are playing beautifully. This one and tables in the practice area. I had a knock around on them. They're absolutely beautiful. 123. What a start from Barry Hawkins. Jeff Trump attempted a long putt. He didn't get it and he remained in his seat as Barry cleared the table with a magnificent break of 130 and he leads 1-0. Thanks, Judd. Thank you. The second frame, Judd Trump to break. Well, not the break off like he intended, but fortunate enough to cover that red that's come up towards the blue with the brown, so into the side of the pack. Well, he's playing it off the two cushions just to guard against leaving the loose red, which is a better shot. <laughs> well, one thing, though, Dennis, Judd Trump must be getting fed up of watching everyone play brilliant against him. Because <laughs> Neil Robertson did yesterday and took a performance that was as good as I've seen from Judd to knock out the Australian. And as Barry started with 130, so he should must be thinking, is anyone ever going to miss against me? Yeah, I thought Neil's interview afterwards was first class. He said, you've got to hold your hand up when a player plays like that. Meanwhile, he hasn't played the best of safety shots. OK, he's close to the cushion, but... I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't slot this one in. One. Don't think this red to the left of the bunch is available. He's got an angle, but he'd have to be very precise to hit the pink full ball. It's not the perfect angle, but he may have to attempt it. Might be okay, that. Yeah. It's difficult to judge that one, Six. John, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's couldn't come out any better. The only thing with that shot is sometimes you can flick the cue ball in the corner pocket, but the way that ran round there, well, I couldn't have asked for any more. Seven. 
So, in the match yesterday, Judd Trump was the one that was making all the running, wasn't he? Going two frames ahead and getting pegged back by Neil Robertson, but different today so far. OK, he's only lost the first frame, but it was the way Barry went about it that put down his intent. <clears throat> 14. He was a bit reluctant to play for the black there because he knew the bunch of reds weren't ideally placed to cannon into off the black. That's why he changed his mind and played for the blue. And I don't think he can hold for the blue this time. He would have liked to have and then gone into the pink again. 20. But I'm not sure he can hold. Just wondering, Dennis, whether those two reds at the back of the pack as well are easily made into a plant. 21. I don't think he's had a look at those, Barry, but if they're not, he'll be playing the cannon in there. Well, we can see that they're not a plant into the pocket, so nice firm stun into these. That's where you hit the ball when you play a stun shot. And that will do very nicely. <laughs> Terrific shot there. Right in the centre, and you punch the shot. Um, he played that perfectly. Yeah, type of shot that if you play that with screw instead, you can hit the pack and bring the cue ball back towards the top cushion. So you stun it out with a little bit of side, bring the cue ball up the table. And he couldn't have played that much better. His nickname is the Hawk. I can tell you what, he's certainly got his eye in at the moment, that's for sure. What's impressive for me, Dennis, is his demeanour looks as cool as anything out there. A little bit flustered. Looks like he's really enjoying the occasion. Well, as some of the players was any such a laid-back character, he's a bit like, uh, what would you say, a mini Mark Williams? Dress is much better than Mark, that's for sure. Who doesn't? Thank you. 35. Thirty-six. And just talking about Mark Williams, what a performance he put in in this year's Masters. He almost knocked out Ronnie O'Sullivan. Yeah, he's one of my favourite players to watch on the circuit, Mark. I think he's very clever the way he plays the game. Forty-one. Wonderful touch and still playing at the top of the game, which is. Great credit to him. Meanwhile, Barry Hawkins is going about his business in a very impressive 42. fashion here. Cannon to flick the red out just and above to the left of the black. Should open the red below it. Hmm. The cue ball's run away there. Didn't get the cannon, wanted it. A thicker cannon than 39. that one. Certainly not on the intended red. And these are a little tricky when you get close to them and you can't see the, the pocket in your eye line. So this red in the centre wants a little bit of respect.
Well, in the end, he made it look very easy, but very well judged. Well, is he going to take the second frame with one visit? 57. Keeps his head very, very still on the shot, doesn't he, John? Does a lot of things right, Dennis, doesn't he? Just a, an all-round top-class player. I must confess, with the record he had here at the Masters, uh, you would have been hard-pressed to see him here at this stage. He's played five occasions previously, lost in the first round every time. But after getting past his good pal Joe Perry, 65. Mark Allen 6-2 with very good match play, and Judd Trump knows He's in for a very tough afternoon here, the way his opponent's playing. You can't get better than no miss snooker. 66. Yeah, Judd's only uh, had a go at that long red, and, uh, and that's it. He's just sat in his seat for the remainder of the time. It's beautifully played. 73. Seventy-four. Surely not. Surely he couldn't start with two centuries. Judd holds the highest 81. break. A break of 140, superseding. Neil Robertson's 139. 82. Play a little cannon here and just flick the other red away from the pink. 89. So let's put it into play. <clears throat> and if that red is not available, he can pop, pop this and just flick it out, but he'd want to make sure of the century. He has nudged it out. 96. He's covered with the blue. The red's blocking the way through to the blue, so the pink for his back to back centuries. 96. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> 102. <laughs> this capacity audience, John, came here. They weren't sure what they were going to expect, but I don't think they were expecting two centuries from Barry to start the match off. Fascinating. You know, this used to be a hard game, Dennis, didn't it? 108. He's making this table look like a pool table, Barry Hawkins, at the minute. Pockets must look like the buckets. 110. His cue ball control has been superb. And you simply cannot play bit better than this to start a semi-final. Wonderful stuff. 113. We talk about yesterday's match with Neil Robertson being the greatest match ever in the Masters. I mean, the way this has started, who knows how this is going to finish. This could be one of the all-time great matches. 122. Slightly overrun his position there, which is something we haven't said today. 128. But everything's been going into the centre of the pocket. He's not touching the sides, and that tells you you're queuing well. Oh. What a shot!
shame the black didn't go in, but he started with a break of 130. He followed that up with a break of 128. What snooker, and he leads Judd Trump by two frames to nil. See a few people uh, coming in just a uh, little bit late. <laughs> Missed a treat, haven't they? It's a bit like you going to Everton and missing the first two goals. Have you ever scored two goals? <laughs> we, we, we score lots of goals at the moment, Dennis. Unfortunately, we let a few in as well, but uh, it's unbelievable this start from Barry Hawkins in this particular match. To start with 130 and 128 is just dreamland in one of the biggest matches of your career. Thank you, Wonderful stuff. Thank you, frame three. Mary Hawkins to break. And it almost caught the blue with a break off shot there. Now this is a chance, it's a half chance for a Judd Trump special, but he, he's been kept off the table. He'll get a great cheer if he can knock this one in. And that really is top draw. To be able to knock that in after what he's just witnessed from his opponent, great credit. Put the camera away, please. Now, Judd, has that gone wrong? I Eight. think it has. He's going to have to pull another cracking pot out. They're covered, but this one will go up into the left corner up past the blue. Brilliant. Not perfectly on the black, but he'll be going into the reds. No, it wasn't nine. on the black as he would have liked, but at least he hasn't left anything easy for Barry. There's one pot on, and he'd need the yeah. extension on his cue, the extension on the rest. To clip it in. Yeah, this type of shot really, if you were just dropping that in dead weight, you'd probably pop, but the fact you had to play the little screw shot to get the cannon there just widened the angle on it for Judd. But it was the first, after he'd knocked that great long red in, it was that first cannon he just overhit. It caused the problem there because they looked pretty good, those reds, until he lost position. He's got a good angle on the blue. Six. Seven. So Barry, very early this morning, he was in the practice room on his own. 
and all the other players got in. And on his own as a player, but he was in there with Terry Griffiths, who's, who's been helping him out and mentoring him. And if anybody knows top class tournament snooker, it's Terry, so he'd be a big help to Barry approaching today. Been there, seen it, done it. Great champion in his own time. Always nice to have a Terry in your Trent. corner. Mm. 21. An interesting little shot. It's the first time I think he's played a poor say, uh, positional shot. Just wanted another couple of inches there to drop on the bottom red, but it's come straight. Change his plan with his position there, so he can screw straight back for these two reds instead. Twenty-eight. Yep. He just looks in the zone to me, Barry Hawkins. He really does. Cue ball cleaned. Maybe that just uh, took his concentration slightly away. And all of a sudden, he's missed a sitter. One. Yeah, I really didn't see that coming, and neither did he. Little shake of his head there, just saying how focused he looked. And well, he'll be as amazed as anybody's missed that one. Looked a little bit Six. wide, didn't it? And so we proved. <clears throat> he would have loved an angle on this red to be able to pot it and open the reds up with the pink right over the pocket, but he can't do that, as you can see. But if he could get on that red this Seven. time, there's still one available at the back of that little bunch. I mean, he could cannon into them, but if he's got the angle to get on that in such a way, he could pot it and open the reds up. And that's what he's played. Needs to pull up a little bit. And because the pink's over the pocket, he's guaranteed to be on it, and he's going to open the rest of the reds Twelve. up. Well judged there. Yeah. 13. Good call, Dennis, and classic example of how to make a break that. Just left it. Purposely low, potted the reds, split them up, and a great chance. But one ladled with pressure. <clears throat> he needs to get in involved in this match, Judd. He's been frozen out for two frames. He knows his opponent's Nine. playing well. Got to score. Twenty. Just come up a little bit short, but it should be okay. Gonna have to play a medium length pot. Much better if you can keep closer control. 25. Amazing. Amazing. It was just Shot getting drop. the wrong side 25. of the blue, but I still fancied them to knock that in. Now that there's an indication there. Just a little bit of movement there, and having said that, the red jumped a little as well. That didn't help, but I don't think he cued that one all that well. Oh, what a chance he's let slip there. Yeah. So we'll just get in the right side of the blue, isn't it? He gets on the correct side of the blue there. He keeps the cue ball much tighter and closer to the object ball. Still like you, Dennis, I didn't think he'd miss that, but... Well, he's had a reprieve. So his second chance. Mm. 
one. Just a couple of uh, fairly easy balls that Barry's missed after those two centuries. Incredible. Judd was 2 0 up against Neil Robertson, so he's uh, done the opposite here. 2 0 down. That was a good strike Four. there. Straight on that green, could have easily got that one wrong, but he left it. He had a choice of three Five. reds. So really, as you say, beautiful bit of cue in there just to get that spot on. There's no excuse now why you can't take this frame. They're there. Yeah, and as we always say, you never settle until you get your first frame on the board and well, you have no chance in the two opening frames. Thanks. 11. Seventeen. Eighteen. Now here's the pink look by Australia in the frame. Twenty-four. How big a ball might that be in the context of the match? 2-0 up, oh, there's an opponent on the rack there. 26. I think it unsettled them a little bit because he missed a comfortable red into the right middle pocket also. Twenty-nine. Well, there's a little naughty shot from Judd. As he always likes to do at the end of a frame. Thirty-eight. Oh, a little touch of the wobble, still went in. And probably a double to finish off with at a hundred miles an hour. Well, 200 miles an hour. It's in, it's in. There you go. That's the way to finish. <laughs> Even Barry has a big smile. So Barry Hawkins never looked like missing, and then all of a sudden he misses that sitter of the pink, and Judd has got his first frame on the board, but he still trails two frames to one. Thank you, fourth frame, Judd Tom to break. Uh, 
Ah, happy times. Yeah, the Masters used to be played at the Wembley Conference Centre. Fabulous venue. Probably a little bit bigger than Ali Pali, but the people are so close to the table here. Back at the Conference Centre, you could be quite away from the table, but it held nearly 3,000 people, the Conference Centre. I remember playing in a final against Alex Higgins with 2,700 people there. I'll never forget that as long as I live. Every time you go back to your table, to remember the plants used to be very close to the table. That's right, and it, it, it was a circle, wasn't it? And uh, as Barry just comes off the side cushion to land in the pack, on one of the earlier occasions I was introduced and I couldn't find my way into the arena. There was a little door that used to open and I couldn't find it. happy days but I do think this is a wonderful venue I really do a brilliant atmosphere and that was where the MC remember he introduced Jimmy White as Jimmy Young <laughs> home of the infamous streaker as well I remember that one I was in the commentary box uh, when, when she went underneath it, I was looking at the table at the time. <laughs> Settle down, please. Thank you. This is a little bit of trouble for him. Going to play off the side of these. You're going to hit this very thin indeed. And you can't guarantee that you're going to not contact the blue on the way past either. On the way back, I should say. Yep, yeah, there was a fair degree of difficulty in that shot. It's a half chance at the moment because the pinks are the commission. I don't think the black goes into the left corner. And the two reds uh, are tied up next to the black. If the black does pot, it will help the situation for a few shots time. Mm, it looks as if it is available, so it's not Six. tied up few more shots to be played before he is able to get on to the black. Yeah, he's had a quick look at it. It's, uh, it's a fairly tight one. Thank you. Seven. It's one of those situations that you really need to be that side of the table where Judd is to properly see whether that goes or not. Always, when players come over and look from behind the pocket, but I don't think that really makes too much of a difference. You can always seem to feel as if you can make the pot go from behind the pocket. It needs to be the other side to get a good judgment on it. But if he's looking at it for this length of time, it's obviously very tight.
Well, as we zoom in, it looks as if it will go. But I don't think he's got an angle on the red to play for the black on this occasion, no. so he'll have to concentrate on the blue. Ten. See, that type of shot, he hits that so well without really forcing it. Yeah, beautiful timing, really is. Probably have to say that Barry Hawkins' positional play so far today has been a little tighter than Judd's cue ball control when he made those two breaks was just superb. And Judd is such a good potter and so much cue power, he just seems to be able to rescue the situations when he slightly goes awry. And he's still not sure about that black, he's been shaking his head, Judd, wondering whether that does go or not. Fifteen. Well, that's about the fourth time he's looked at that. It's still exactly the same. He's playing for it. And 16. if he's got an angle, he can nudge the other reds away, although he may not have that, no, not on this occasion. And you've got to play it now, Judd. Amazing. In the end, we did think it was tight, Should and drop. in the end, he 16. put it onto the red. Yep, it was always looking like that, wasn't it? It was really tight. The fact that it was sort of not directly in line with that red, slightly behind it, probably confused the issue there. I mean, no top class professional is going to take a shot on they don't think goes, but that was extremely tight. Well, at least he got away with it. He didn't put Barry in. Excellent safety shot. Excellent weight on the cue ball. Bit of a free shot here. Shot to nothing. Brilliant pop. Yeah, that'll teach him to play good safety shots. Incredible pot. Ramble. Shot from one. Yeah, when we call it a shot to nothing, it's where you take a pot like this on a very difficult pot and you know you're going to get a safety shot if you happen to miss it. But in the end, rolling up behind the brown has given him a slight advantage. He's gone twice across the table here to land in the red. He doesn't want to slip past this, otherwise he'd leave it up. Oh, that's a Foul. bit careless Miss. from Trump. Barry. Yeah, and the worst part as well is he's just got to drop this red in dead weight. I mean, these can be pretty difficult down the top cushion, but just dropping it in. One. He's left in perfect position. So you just feel as if the momentum has slightly changed in this match. And I'm going to harp back on about that pink, but when it was 2-0 and he was in the balls, that miss on the pink could be very crucial indeed Eight. in this match. He had his opponent on the rack, did Barry Hawkins. Yeah, even mm. in the best of 11, you can always pick out one shot that can turn a match, and that was... And the shot that John was referring to. Oh, he hasn't judged the cannon. Is he okay? Just about, I think. 16. Yep, no problem. 17. Yeah, Steve was talking in the studio. We went back before saying, you know, some players 
20 foot. A bit more ruthless in that capacity for keeping the pressure on. And obviously, we know that, Dennis, that Steve was certainly one of those. And Stephen Hendry, another one. Great champions here. He thought there was any weakness or they were on top and they needed to keep you in your seat. They'd be trying as hard as anybody to do that. 2 0 became 3 0, became 4 0. That's why they were great champions. First little bit of a test here. 32. Not, not straightforward this, but he makes them look easy. Well played. 33. Yeah, there's so many players now playing to such a high standard, but uh, yeah, Steve Davis, uh, if you made a mistake, you used to go and sit down and get yourself ready for the next frame. So. so he just needs another red after this black. And it may be a possible plant which would secure the frame if the plant goes in let's have a look is it in line with the pocket yeah that looks good to me yeah. that's Jackie's brother and his girlfriend Khadija they'll be feeling much better now after Watching the two opening frames there, where they've been wondering what was going on. Yellow. Yellow. Yes, and OK, he had a little bit of help in frame three. There's Barry missing a couple of opportunities, Judd Trump, but he'll be delighted to get to the mid-session interval 2-2. Two, two. He's played very well in this frame. We sit in your chair for so long and seeing your opponent start with breaks of 130 and 128. He'd have taken 2 2 at the interval all day long. Great response. 51. He got a terrible 52. kick there, which has spoiled the break. Now, is he going to double the pink across the table? I think these two are a plant. Because there's just a possibility he could 58. make a century break. Uh, I don't know if he can squeeze that. It's going to the left of the pocket, as you can see. If they were touching, he might be able to squeeze the second red. No, it wasn't on. That's no right. century break, but I'll tell you what, Jeff okay. Trump would be absolutely delighted. That break of 58. Levels the scores and we go to the mid-session interval, two frames all.
OK, OK. So both players back into the auditorium. Let's let these four guys go in. Yeah. Myself and Dennis had a cup of tea there. And both players seem very relaxed. Thank you, frame five. Stage. Barry Hawkins to it. So you give us having a little chat with Barry Hawkins and should have a little bite to eat. So both players enjoying a little bit of downtime in the middle of this cracking semi-final. Yeah, no need to go to the practice room. They're both playing fairly well. I've been here just over a week, so the game is very sharp. It's just you'd head to the practice table if you're struggling a little bit. There's the pot success rate, identical on 91%. That's for the tournament. And the safety success, well, that's amazing, both on 85%. That tells you a story. You wouldn't have maybe had that stuff for Judd a couple of seasons ago. He has changed his game slightly. And for the better, it has to be said, because you just can't keep potting your way to winning tournaments. You've got to have a good tactical game as well. And this frame, already a little awkward with two reds up the other end of the table. And the safety zone's now behind the black. got to be careful with that shot. You sometimes get obsessed with getting the cue ball so tight that reds can flick out and go towards the middle pocket. So whilst it looks simple, certainly on these very fast cloths, the reds open very quickly. But Judd's played that pretty well. Yeah, if there wasn't reds available, the one next to the blacks available, he could have a go at the one into the left middle pocket and drop on the pink, but he can't risk that because he'd put Judd right in amongst them. <coughs> well, it's amazing where that red's finished in uh, the final frame against Neil Robertson. White was in the jaws of the corner pocket and Judd knocked a red like that in and, uh, and won the match with a century break. It wasn't easy that he... He had a go at it, but he knew he was going to get a reasonable cue ball. I don't think those, there's no plants on. I think there's two there, but they're not on for the right middle pocket. Is there two on for the right corner? There's another two reds at the left side of the bunch. They're obviously not in line either. Oh, he's taking the back double on. He'll be on the black if it goes in. <laughs> clever shot. Very clever shot. Yeah. Couldn't agree with you more. I the double there, but also an element of safety. Only really the red that he played. He could probably stick up if it hit the jaw and come back. He could have left it, but... The way he played that was very smart. And he does play shots different to other people. Eight. That makes him attractive to watch and difficult to play against. I mentioned yesterday, sometimes there's not a uniformity to the game when you play against Judd. It's not always Nine. like you get with other players, but it makes him very easy on the eye. His Play a lot of different shots, and that one was very clever. Eleven. Oh. Well, that's Jack Trump. 
11. There's a real lapse in concentration there. He was away a couple of shots ahead of himself. And, uh, well, how do you miss one that easy? It's amazing. In this game, if you don't get, give every one. shot 100% concentration, it's incredible what can be missed. Well, I'm in a state of shock he missed that, and I'm sure he must be, because really that was an absolute Eight. sitter. Oh, good shot. Nice. Loads of top spin. Straight through the pack. It's the cute little jump here. Oh. In the old days, that could have been a foul shot, but uh, you have to jump over an intervening ball so you can play a pot like that, and it doesn't matter if the white bounces over other balls. Yeah, still got a little bit of work to do here, and obviously you'd fancy Barry to knock this black in, but the next red has to be the one that's on the top cushion, I think, unless he can manufacture something else. So good queuing required for these. Well played. And these are not easy. 16. Well, they're not too bad if you're just dropping them in, but when you're playing them with a bit of pace, you've got to be spot on. 17. No problem. Hmm, seems to get a bit of check side on that that he didn't want. Cue ball came off the cushion, very strange there. That's just when it comes off. Didn't go the normal angle, just checked up. Twenty-five. Decent recovery. And it's helped the situation. He's pushed a red near the left. Corner, he can get onto that after the pink here. And I say he can get onto it. Has he gone far enough? There's one to the middle. I think he's okay. 31. Plenty of room. Great chance for Barry here. And if he can punish that. 32. Very bad mistake from Judd. It will give. Uh, Give it, Judd, something to think about. He's a bit reluctant to play a cannon there. He's got the balls nicely open. You know, when you risk playing a cannon, it can always go wrong. I'll tell you what, his heart is in his mouth there. Mm, he, he miss hit that because he didn't really want the cue ball going anywhere. In the middle pocket there, he got a little bit lucky. That's one you needed to screw a bit more just to make sure that you didn't throw the angle wide. But now it's happened, it's perfect position. <laughs> I 
Yeah, I remember reading many years ago, Dennis, an old Joe Davis book, an instruction to him when I first started. My father 63. told me, he said, there's no such thing as an easy shot. And it just still applies today, as it always did. How did Judd Trump miss that red in the middle? 54. Yeah, it's one of the easiest shots you could ever wish to have. And it's <clears throat> definitely going to cost him the frame because look at the situation of the balls 59. here. They're perfectly placed. Sixty. So the interval coming at the right time for Barry Hawkins. Made those two magnificent century breaks, then went off the ball, missed an easy pink, missed a fairly comfortable red. But he's back to 66. the way he started the match. With a little help 67. from his friend. Seventy-three. Those horrible situations if you judge Trump where you're just sitting in your chair, absolutely squirming at the miss you've just made. Seventy-four. Just sit and watch your opponent put all the balls that should have been yours. Seventy-four. Oh. Well, no century break, but Barry won't be too disappointed about that. That magnificent break of 74 is more than enough to get him back into the lead. He now leads three frames to two. Thank you, Judd. Thank you, frame six. Judd Trump to break. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's made a reasonable break off shot. Can't really take the pot on there because he would go straight into the pink. So it'll be just a safety shot. And not the best safety shot. Where's this red going? Hold on a minute. Wow. I think everyone in the alley pally thought that red was gonna drop. Thank you, Daldo, thanks. But it was a a poor safety he played there. Uh, Judd could do with uh, knocking a few in here just to One. erase that sitter that he missed in the previous frame. Played in an area there where Eight. we've got an option of two. The bottom red at the pack is available, and if he pots this, he'll certainly move some other reds about. Yeah, no. played a nice control shot there, promoted a couple of reds into play.
16. Seventeen. Just having a look to see about the loose reds. They're not a good pack to go into at the moment. Twenty-four. Still a few reds available. Twenty-five. That might just be okay. There's one to the right that'll go. He stunned it in rather than screwing it in because you can stick in the back of the reds if you screw it. Always let that go. That's a little lapse in concentration there. He knew he was cannoning the other red and uh, he's just misjudged it. This is tough. Oh, that's brilliant. That is a terrific recovery. It really is. That is such a tough shot, 40. cutting it back into a blind pocket. You can't see the pocket in your eye line. 40. Yes, that was a terrific recovery. They've been very disappointed to see his positional shot prior to that. So that was a, an excellent pot. A pot of somebody who's been putting plenty of hours in on the practice table. He certainly did that over the Christmas period. 48. I believe he didn't even go home for Christmas this year. He stayed down where he practices. Put all 49. the hours in, so he's certainly making the sacrifices. He realises, Judd, that at the time of his career where he should be winning major championships. So he's certainly paying his dues. 56. Yeah, his family live 57. in the Bristol area. In fact, Judd used to practice at the Kenchim Snooker Centre, played there a few times. 56. It's just finished a little awkward. As he just, you can 64. see the way Judd just looked away from the table there. He's, He's gone a little bit too far for one red and not quite far enough for the other. So a fraction either way. This is still a straightforward pot, but he's having to can the red. He could have done without that. So he's looking at the slightly more difficult pot here. He's 64 in front, so he's only a couple of pots away from securing the frame. Sixty-five. Yeah, he was trying to stay on all blacks, but the main thing is to clinch the frame. Seventy-one. Seventy-two. Well, this showing his class here after, as I say, in the previous frame. Missed that absolute sitter of a red into the middle, and um, that's well 79. out of his mind now. Winning the frame with one visit. Eighty. Eighty-seven. Yeah, 
This is very impressive. 88. I think he's shot earlier in this break. Let's see him knock this one in. The shot he played earlier in this break to keep it going was fabulous. This was it. Really acute shot. Full blooded. 95. Couldn't play it any better. He deserved everything he got after that. 96. This is a great response. And this, for yet another century, this year's Masters. What a standard. Superb. 103. 375th career century. And the 22nd in this year's Masters. Doesn't matter about that. Barry will stay on his feet. On the frame. So you Jump can't on. do better than get one chance and knock on a century. A good way to draw level. It's three frames each. Yeah, in fact, that was the 23rd century in this year's Masters, and uh, the record, as I mentioned, 31. That was achieved back in 2009, John. Yeah, it's been a phenomenal standard here this week. Yesterday's match, obviously, with Judd and Neil Robertson. And you won't see better than that ever, in my opinion. That was as good as it's going to get. But uh, this is a fascinating contest. Of that, there's no doubt. Barry Hawkins starting with breaks of 130 and 128. And Judd coming straight back for two each, and then 74 and 103. So the scoring has been fantastic in this match. And he's doing very well today, Judd. The question was at the start, Dennis, would he be you know, would he be able to do it? Meanwhile, Barry is back into the arena here. And it just has a 6-5 written all over it. Thank you. The seventh frame, Harry Hawkins to break. Well, not the best of break-offs from Barry. I mean, Judd, the way... Look that century in, he's got an early chance. It's not a gimme, but he's so good at this type of shot. One. That's what we call a Trump special. Six. That was the long pot success, 83%, which is very good indeed. Seven. <clears throat> Such a fantastic weapon to have in an arsenal, isn't 14. it? Just to be able to. Not those long pots in. Get yourself in amongst the balls. Okay, Barry's break wasn't great, Dennis, 15. was it? But I think it's probably something the players should work a little bit more on the break-off shot because it's so important these days. 
It's something you wouldn't normally practice. 22. 23. Well, this is going to be awkward. He's going to need probably an extended spider to get to this. There's so Six. many balls to bridge over here. He took the risk there, and he's a bit unlucky to finish where he has. I'll just show you that. Uh, played it well enough, but unlucky to stick where it has. And as I say, there's all those balls to bridge over. He's switching hands. Now, this will be useful, but that is just as awkward. You know what, the way they, they are, I'm not even sure he can get near that cue ball with a, an extended. It's just not very often you're bridging over well, one, two, three balls in the line. Very tricky to get at. Might just be a safety. Is he going to have a go with an extended spider just to see what it l looks like? Or? Yeah. Spider, normal one, extended. I think I it's mean, worth an idea. You know, it's worth a shot, isn't it? Have a go. And if, if he can yeah. play it, he will do. But this will be interesting to see whether he can actually reach over. That's what we call the extended spider there. There's a swan neck spider also. But, I mean, this... Well, he's quite a tall lad, Judd, so he's smiling because he doesn't fancy this one little bit. No, I don't like that. He just wants to keep potting balls, but I think he's going to have to play the safety shot. Judd Trump, 30. <laughs> yeah, so he's a little disappointed he broke down 30, but he's played the correct shot there. Simply couldn't get back to the cue ball. <laughs> I don't know if there's two reds in line for a plant. That's what Barry's looking at, and that tells me that it's on. Looking at Barry's face, he might be able to make this plant. Let's have a look. Yeah. I think this is virtually plum, isn't it? The one thing you've got to do with this is, if you know it's a certainty, is play a good positional shot off it. One. And he's got a good positional shot off it. And in a couple of shots' time, he could get on the red next to the black. He Brown. might even be able to do it from here. He's OK, he's found the gap for this one, but uh, Five. The first chance he gets, he'll get on that red as close as to the black and get it into play. Six. Yeah, there we go. Just the plant into the corner. Nothing worse when you're standing there, Dennis, with your cue in your hand and you look at the table and you think, oh, no. I've left the plant on. Yeah, we could see it in his face, couldn't we? He knew straight away, Barry, that he'd left it on, and there could be a few more to come here. 11. Twelve. Some very quick frames indeed. We've had. 11 minutes, 13 minutes, 11, 12 minutes, 19. the longest frame, believe it or not, was just over 16 minutes. 20. Yep, refreshing and really good to watch. Quick fire snooker at its best. 
and he looks like he's got the momentum now, Judd. Turn this match around. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. Yeah, that's virtually a frame ball there. Just the black to make absolutely certain. Still a possible sixty-seven on the table, but uh, this is a formality here. Forty three. Forty four. This was the safety shot that. Barry played. He thought he'd got it 49. reasonably safe, and then he walked round, seeing that the plant was on, and uh, 50. That was his last shot in this frame. I think it had 365 57. points each. Yeah, that's a point for each day in the year. 58. 58. <laughs> well, he's taking a bit of time over this. Obviously, he's mad keen on clearing up or making a century. Oh, what a try that was. He got too much action on it. So is there a double that will keep... Let me show you the shot again. Look at the action on the cue ball there. He left to pull off a fantastic double if he's going to give himself a chance of that... 64. ...century break. A treble will do. A treble will do. 65. That really was what you call a naughty double that turned into a naughty treble. Yeah, and he's got the angle here. Pop the black and just flick the red out if he wants. Oh, he's missed the cannon. Well, even Judd Trump can't pop this one. Right, hit it as hard as you can, Judd. There's six pockets. There we go. Go on, Red. Get in somewhere. Unlucky. <laughs> no century break. But that was a magnificent effort from Judd Trump. And that break of 72 gets him into the lead. It's 4-3 to the Juddernaut.
Thank you. The eighth frame, Judd Trump to break. Well, let's see if Judd can make a better break off shot. Yeah, I remember back in the 70s when Pop Black was going, just one frame, if you won the toss, you didn't want to break off because you were so nervous. Yeah, with the standards the way they are, it's becoming ever more important, but it's partly to do with the, the cloth that we play on. You can't quite get all the, the action and the work on the ball, and the cushion slides so much with the cloth being shaved that difficult to widen the angle and get the cue ball down behind a ball colour sometimes. And it's a very big frame for Barry Hawkins. There's time he's gone behind in the match. That shot just shows you how fast this table is, really. He hardly touched that. And look where the cue ball's finished up. Now, this is a tricky little shot to get on the red and pot the brown. He's just playing to drop it in, and yeah. it's gone wrong. It was a delicate little cannon that was needed there. Five. I think he thought he was going to just hit the red on the way across the table there. Just Trump, five. Yeah, we were talking about the cloth. I was in pretty early this morning and the auditorium was empty. Pete Godwin, the table fitter, was brushing the table down and ironing it. And he said, you know, come over, had a feel of the nap. And it's just literally like a sheet of glass. There's virtually no nap on it at all. And if you haven't got good striking of the cue ball on here, the cue ball flies all over the place with a bit of side and it won't be coming back, so you do have to hit it properly. Cloth goes through a process of being shaved two, three times just to get it down to that specific length. Not like the greens at Augusta. Where's the red going? He almost fluked it, but he got up straight away off the shot, and he might have got away with this. If okay, that white is close to the pink, he might not be able to see the potting angle here. Well, it's just away from the pink, so he's just okay. But Judd got up straight away when he played the shot. One. Now, watch Judd's reaction here. You see, straight away he knew he hadn't made the correct contact. I don't think he got a kick, did he? No, we were talking just a minute ago about the side. He's just put a little bit of side on that and it bitten into the cue ball and straightened it up. It was one of those he needed a little bit of left-hand side to come round the angles and a little touch of side on it to straighten the ball up. Oh. One. Thank you. Chance gone back in there. One. Eight. <laughs> Trump eight. He didn't cue that very well. So both players starting to feel the pressure out there. Neither of these boys have ever been to the final of the Masters. So it is a big day for them.
big pot that was, lots of pressure on it. Yeah, practicing you'd fancy knocking it in, but this isn't practice. And cued that beautifully. And well, Judd got helped earlier in the match in the third frame with Barry missing a relatively simple Eight. shot. Judd's just helped Barry Hawkins out because he must have been thinking in the chair there. I could be going 5 3 down. Nine. And that was a very poor miss from Judd. Yeah. See, just a little bit of movement. I know yeah. sometimes he does move, Judd, but uh, you heard Sean Murphy and a little chat about the players. Steve Cairn Doherty and Sean Murphy does, and he was expressing how um, Judd just moves a little bit with his body on the shot. Of course, Sean Murphy was the defending champion here, and uh, Mark Allen uh, played very well to 24. knock Sean out 6 4. And I know Sean's an avid snooker fan, he'll be watching all the snooker. Yes, I can tell you something else. He won't be missing the Reds three times on the trot again. Because he did it in that match. First time ever at the Masters and forfeited the frame to Mark Allen. You only do that sort of thing once. Thirty-one. Yeah, we've 32. had some magnificent snooker here in this match alone, but it has to be said, both players have missed a couple of sitters. As I said, they're both under tremendous pressure going for the first ever Masters final. This is a lovely opportunity, though, just a little series of stuns and screws around the pink. No need to be even contemplating the black the way. 39. These are positioned. Twenty seven point lead at the moment, more to come. Didn't play the last shot particularly well though, needed to leave an angle to stun over the, the two reds, so he, he didn't want to leave the cue ball there. Should have been more over to the right. This is a very 45. big frame, obviously, in the context of the match, but if Barry Hawkins doesn't win it from here, he'll absolutely kick himself. 46. Because this is a brilliant chance. Fifty four. Sixty one. There's this red and colour. Should see him over the line in this frame. Sixty two. It's anybody's game at the moment, the way it's going. Yeah, I mentioned that it had six, five written all over it. And the last time we played here in 2013, Judd. 69. Six frames to five. 
That was in the first round on that occasion. 70. I can tell you, two other people who'd love a 6-5, Dennis. Ronnie O'Sullivan and Stuart Bingham. I want to 72. see both of these two players go through the mill. Make as much out of themselves. 73. Great double. Might have to play another double if he hasn't got an angle to get over to the last red. Well, he has a bit of angle here. Come on, knock this in, Barry, and give us another century. It's a tough one, though. 78. No, doesn't really matter that that's not going in Very at the moment. It's one mistake costing the players the game. That was a magnificent break of 78 from Barry Hawkins. He had a little help from Judd, but he's all square at four frames all. Take your seat, please. Thank you. Frame nine. Barry Hawkins to break. Hazel was absolutely right there. She knows this game inside out. He did go for it. He didn't manage to pull it off, and it's a half chance here for Barry. It's not an easy starter for him. But if he can slot this one in, it will be an early chance for him. Yeah, he might just choose to play this a little bit like a shot to nothing where maybe the black will cover the pocket if he doesn't get it but he didn't he played it full bloodedly one and well done and it's one of those shots you could play it two ways there but that was the aggressive way no thought about missing her So first chance, Barry Eight. Hawkins in frame nine. Well, you can see his intention there to get on the pink in such a way that he can then pot it and go into the reds, but... Uh, nine. Has to be played with uh, a lot of top spin here. You can see him striking the cue ball up near the top. And I 
was going to say he's a bit unlucky, but maybe the one next to the cue ball, he might have a slight angle to be able to pot it and get on the black. It's a bit close to it, though. Makes it slightly more difficult. Oh, the, way, the way Barry's looking at it, I don't think 15. there's uh, too much doubt that he's going to take it on. Once again, just got to be a little careful with your cue in here. Balls are close together. Oh, well played. 16. If the pink goes into the corner, it wouldn't be a bad 23. ball to play on to bring reds into play. Yeah, Dennis, I'm surprised he hasn't had a little look around there. 24. Oh, the, I agree with you there. If he could have played a stun out and come on that pink and left it high, he could have potted that and certainly opened the reds out. Yeah, it's a bit more difficult off the black. Played for the end red. Now, will he do it this time? 31. He's coming round, I think, to have a look at the pink now. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely the, the shot that'll open the game up. Decided to play and leave it on the low side, so he's going to play the little cannon into the three reds to the left of the pink. <coughs> be a little bit careful when he plays this, of course, he's be coming near the pink spot. Oh, couldn't have done any better. Good call, Dennis. You picked the shot 38. up. 38. <laughs> 39. That's happened a few times where Judd just took a difficult long pot on, which he's always going to do anywhere, but uh, he's being punished for just that one mistake. But he's won a few frames with just the one chance. Certainly the two opening frames, 130, 46. 128. And then he had a 74 to go back in the lead. 78, and the last to level. 47. Great stuff. Yes, and that straight red miss in the last frame from Judd has proven to be very costly. It cost him the last game, but it's thrown a momentum back to Barry Hawkins, who looks like he's queuing. Like he did in the opening 54. two frames again. Fifty-five. Yeah, they need to miss too many balls to swing the momentum round. Here's the red. Play all day and he wouldn't miss that in the club. But it's proven at the moment to be very costly. Well, this is how Barry played when he got to the final of the World Championships a few seasons 16. ago. Yeah. Curing superbly well. Yes, and it took Ronnie O'Sullivan to beat him in the final. Put up a good performance there. Very daunting coming out of the crucible for your first final, and you've got arguably the best player who's ever lived in the other chair. He's acquitted himself very well in that. Sixty-one. Not far from the winning line in this frame. A couple more pots will 
Be enough. Sixty-eight ahead. Sixty-eight. And there's a few more to come here, has to be said. Sixty-nine. Well, Judd's going to have to go to the well. He's going to have to drag up concentration and focus and all his ability. There'll be two frames he needs to win. He's going to have to find it from somewhere. 75. He played brilliantly yesterday. As good as I've seen him play, but he's going to have to do the same thing in the last two frames because Barry Hawkins looks like he's back in stroke. 83. Eighty four. Ninety one. Ninety two. This really is. A bit special from Barry Hawkins. He has to be able to produce this standard on one of the biggest stages in world snooker when it means so much to you. 99. He's a big feather in his cap. This really is excellent stuff. And this red just for his uh, third century in this match alone. from Barry Hawkins. 100. That's the 24th century in this year's Masters. He sacrificed the position and made sure of the century, but it doesn't matter whether he pops the black or not. He'd like to. And as he got the cannon also, uh, the cue ball might be in the middle pocket, but that doesn't really matter. He got his century seven. break. And what a match we've got on our hands same. again. Barry Hawkins with breaks of 78. And then that century, he now leads five frames to four. Just one frame away from a place in the final. Well, the standard here, John, has been superb. And Judd Trump, all he's doing in a few of the frames, is having a go at that first long pot. He knocks a high percentage of them in. But against uh, Barry, the way he's playing, he now knows if he misses one of these, he could lose the frame. Yeah, that's his game, Dennis. He's always taking them on. I don't blame him in the slightest when you're as good as he is. I'm not going to tell him a shot selection for those because he usually knocks them in. But he did that and left that situation there. I thought Barry Hawkins' opening red was an absolute cracker. I mean, on these tables, on the tournament tables along the top cushion, they're not easy. And he played it the correct way, didn't he? He played it absolutely proper. There's no thought about, I might miss this. This is the red he drops in. I really admire him for playing in like that. He keeps so still on the shot. And when you think of the breaks he's knocked in, he's had 130, 128, a 74, a 78, and another century there. I mean, it's quite an incredible standard he's produced here in his first ever semi-final of a Masters. Now the question now is, what has Judd got left? Has he got enough petrol in the tank to turn this around? and win the final two frames and get into tomorrow's final. He was asked plenty of questions yesterday by Neil Robertson. This is the biggest question to answer now. Thanks, Thank you, frame 10. Judd Trump to break. Judd gets frame 10 underway. And he will be hoping that it's not his last frame. And I think this whole Ali Pali crowd would love to see a deciding frame. And there's the fantastic arena. Barry will have other ideas.
That's close to the corner pocket, the cue ball. He hit that safety much too thin, but uh, he was never really going to leave anything. Too thick on his safety, but be delighted the Blues come to his rescue. Oh, that would have been sticking out, he'd definitely been taking it on. A chance for Barry to play a good safety here, but you've got to be careful as you don't knock a red over the corner. A yeah, good shot. Just you know, say, got away with it slightly. This is not an easy red that Barry's faced with. If the black was available, he might be able to take it on, but he'd have to punch this in and get up for the blue. And you can see that he's going to attempt that shot, just queuing below center, just to see. Or he could leave himself on the blue. The harder he hits it, the less chance he has of knocking it in. Yeah, the way you line that up, Dennis, it tells me that there's not much angle in this. See these tight pockets, as soon as you try to force it. It's an easy starter for Judd, but it's not straightforward by any means. The pink's out of commission, the black's tied up. He's got a screw back for the blue here. Not a bad effort One. from that position. Mm, how well did he hit that with the rest? That was excellent. We'll talk about his cue power generally, but to get that work there, fabulous. Just needs that cue ball to bounce up a touch. Six. Seven. Well, that's not the black safe. It was in an awkward position anyway. He's on a red here, Ten. but well, he left a call on all his cue power here to screw back. He'll catch the reds. I don't think he, he might be able to pinch a little bit and avoid that. Yeah, he did do. He left. And he played it well. Just got a little bit of angle, but this is far from being an easy chance. Just had a look there, just to see if he stuns there and leaves the cue ball. Plays a little cannon on the two reds to the, the left of that red, where he can stay on the pink in the centre. We'll be to find out in a minute. Yeah, I think you're... Shot John's a good call here. 16. This could open things up somewhat. Well, he's decided to go through for the blue again, but uh, your 17. shot was also on. But I think the pink might now be in the open. If it goes into the right corner, he'll have blue and pink to go at. Yep. Twenty-two. 
I don't think the pink's on its spot, so he'd have to be see if he potted the pink. I don't think it'd go back on its spot, but he's got the blue to work with for the time being. Well, he'd be on 28 points after this blue goes in, but this has been an, an excellent break so far. It was far from straightforward when he came to the table. That red stuck in the jaws. 28. He's just scrapping for position in this break. He's just been slightly off for the last three or four shots. 29. Once again, the cue ball's too low, so he's got to go in and out of the bork area. So he's doing well to keep this break going. Well, how's your luck, Judd? Doesn't look very good. 34. It was very, very difficult. The, the previous shot, he couldn't get the correct side of the blue because he screwed back, and if he had hit it any harder, he would have screwed into the middle pocket. But he's got a nice 34-point advantage. Yes, I said he was scrapping for position and eventually it caught up with him. Okay, he's a bit unfortunate to finish where he has done, but when you just got a little bit of doubt of where the cue ball is going to finish, that can happen. I think he'd just come off the red that's near the middle pocket and leave the white up in the jaws of the corner pocket. That would keep things fairly safe. I don't think this pots is quite an acute angle. Well, he thinks he can get it in. Judd Trump, 34. <coughs> had a straightforward safety shot, but he thought he could maybe just sneak that red into the middle pocket. Yeah, I think he also played that with the, on the understanding that even if he left the cue ball there, what was Barry going to do off it if he pots the red that's in the open? Doesn't look like there's any position for him, so he's completely ignoring that other red. That was quite a cute little shot you'd played there. Judd Trumpois. Nothing wrong with that. Taking the opponent away. Now, oh, Dennis, how'd you get out of this one? <laughs> well, he's tucked him tight in behind the yellow. Somehow, he's got to try and get to the two reds that are to the right of the black spot area because there's nothing near a cushion to land on. So he's got quite a problem here. I mean, if he can swerve around the yellow a little bit, he could maybe get to those. But I think he's so close to the uh, to the yellow, it's, it's not going to be easy to do that. Yeah. Because he's so close to the yellow, he can't play that escape shot. If he was slightly away from the yellow, he could maybe get get there he'd have to really swerve around the yellow to make that angle he might still he's thinking about it well, if he goes there he's got an awful long way to travel to get to those two reds but that's what he's trying he doesn't want to hit that red the right side of the table Now, this is a pretty good effort. It's a brilliant effort. He's got to those two reds. Fantastic. <laughs> what an escape he's played there. Terrific.
Another clever little shot from Judd if he gets past the brown. Hmm. Well, he took the chance there because he just chipped the red onto the side cushion to put it safe. He got a 35-point lead. Black's out of commission at the moment, so he thought it was well worth taking the risk to stick the red safe. Didn't quite get the cue ball right, though. Where's the cue ball going if he pops this? Can he get, find the gap? Wow. One. <laughs> well, the black was out of commission. What a shot. <laughs> Just OK. I think he was playing for the gap there. That was a bonus Eight. to knock the black over the pocket like that. But he'll take it. Now then. No. What a chance for Barry Hawkins. Yeah. And that red that's on the left-hand side cushion that Judd Trump Stuck there with the last shot. OK, it wasn't the best safety shot in the respect of the cue ball. But will that red come to his rescue? There's a lot of snooker to be played before then. The amount of pressure 14. that these boys are under. You almost think they're going to clear up without thinking about the circumstances. They're that good, but... There's a chance to reach his first 15. Masters final here, and he'll be under the cosh. Don't worry about that. Yeah, he's had five attempts and never got past the first round, but he's made up for all those defeats the way he's played this year. He does strike the ball beautifully, Barry Hawkins. Lovely to watch, great rhythm around the table. Yeah, if he can just stun up onto the pink here. 27. Once he pots that, it should be on the bottom red. Why did both of those reds pot? Yeah. 33. So he's got the one difficult red, as John said. He may take the chance to try and develop that red. Oh, he's just missed it. 34. Oh, that could have been a match winner there. Had he have got the cannon correctly. Yes, and not only did he just miss the flick on that red, his position's gone awkward. It's one of those he could have missed it and ended up still on the green or the brown or any ball colour, but where it's finished, it's not easy for a pot. Just shows you the fine margins, Dennis, doesn't it? He gets that cannon, it could be all over. Brown ball. Yeah, he can get in behind the black, I think, if he judges this. Mm. They're, they're tough, they're not easy. Barry Hawkins, I mean, 34. In fact, he might even be able to see enough of this red near the pink spot to cut it in. But that last shot he tried is so difficult to judge. But don't be surprised if this doesn't go in. One. Fabulous shot, and he's got a bit of angle on the brown. Can he somehow, if anyone can get to the last red, it's Judd, but it, can he 
have enough angle to miss the green and screw back, John? I don't know, but now he's thinking, why did I put that red safe? <laughs> Funny the way the frame works out. Well, listen, if he can't muster up a positional shot to free the red, why not go in behind the brown and leave him in a very difficult snooker? But if there's half a chance he can get to the red, he'll take it. He might have to play a little sort of a banana-type shot when he screws it back. But now he's looking at going in behind the brown, which wouldn't be a bad choice. Brown. Brown. Yeah, I like this shot. Got Trump mm. one. I don't think that's the best way of playing it, though. I'd have been cutting off the top cushion. Still, it gives him the opportunity to drop on this dead weight. Which he wouldn't have had if he'd have covered that off, Judd. Far, you miss. Yeah, he won't mind giving a, a couple of uh, Trump for. penalty points away as long as he just drops on it. But I'm with you, John. He should have blocked this escape route. When you think about it, where that is, Dennis. It would have been an absolute stinker to get out of if, the, if he's blocked this line off. But where this is, he's just going to keep playing the same shot. Yeah, the only thing is, if he hits it slightly harder than he intends, he could push it over the middle pocket. <laughs> well, it's a containing shot, but he could be in behind the pink here. Yes, Barry made sure there that he played cushion first, so it took away the chance of promoting that red a little. We haven't had many close frames in this match. It's all been about heavy duty scoring. But we've got one now. Well, it's great I mean, to see the big breaks and that, but <laughs> a lot of people enjoy this just as much. It's much more tense when the frame's like this. His main concern here is to try and get that red ball safe. Well, he knocked a similar pot in the other way round previously when he cut one in off the pink spot. This time the red's near the brown spot. close was that he needs this cue ball to get tight on the cushion to make it awkward for Barry this is far from easy it looks to be almost straight John yeah that's what he'd be looking for he'd be looking for it to be bolt straight to make it more difficult but I'm not so sure it is still a tough pot this though that was far from easy Throw in the fact of the circumstances. That red must have looked like the size of a football. Shh. Wow, look at the expression on Barry's face there. Oh, he can get a snooker here, you know. Judd's parents there, Stephen, Jardine, and they will be so tense. It's worse sometimes watching. That's one of Judd's good friends there next to his parents. Yep, follows into all the tournaments. Biggest fan. Terrible watching. Is he going to risk swinging this around the angles to try and get in behind the uh, well, the green and black are in a good position. So if he was to sort of even get a cannon on the brown, it would be pretty good. He's hit it a bit thin. He's hit it far too thin. 
Oh, he's made a bad mistake there. But the blue has gone into an awkward position, but that was a good chance. Thank you. Settle down, to please. Play a snooker, and he just hit it far too thin. Yeah, just, as you say, Dennis, just too thin trying to get it round there. And, and Lord Natalie, this would be a red that would be food and drink to Barry Hawkins, but this is not ordinarily. And I'm not so sure the blue has gone safe. Big shot. One. Well, he's already looking at the blue, so not for this shot, but he's going to need that. And if he could just get in behind it, that would be all he'd need, John. Yeah, I'm just looking at it. It actually is a perfect angle. If it's not as bad, it's perfect. The green's going to go past the brown. If he could drop the blue in, he'd have a straight shot of the yellow, even though he'd be a little closer to the cushion. But anyway, the green is as good as anything. I was just thinking for. A little bit later for blue to pink, whether it's going to be a bit more awkward, but you know, come to that when he gets to it. Well, just Four. looking at the score, when he pots the yellow, we'll be all square, 40 points each, so he's going to need the pink. So even if he gets Six. onto that blue, I don't think he can do much with it to get up close to the pink, so there's a little bit of tension left in this frame. Nine. Yes, this is the big shot. If he can just knock this in and get the correct angle on the blue, just to give himself a little chance of pushing through it and getting closer, but as I say, it's uh, the way he's cueing it, Dennis, it's not great, is it? He can't do much with the blue, he can only just drop it in and he'd have to leave a very difficult pink. And that's why he's tried to move it slightly. 13. Oh, he's pretty close to the blue. It will go into the left corner, but what a shot to judge. Settle down, please. This is so awkward. Yeah, he's also liked to stun it a little bit. He just had a little look to see if the, the centre pocket was in the way. Tough shot. It's there. What a shot he's played there. And he's perfect 18. on the pink. Unbelievable shot. Judd Trump thought he had a lifeline there, but what a shot. And Barry Hawkins pulled off. Unbelievable match. And that's what it means to Barry Hawkins. He's made three century breaks, and it's nice to see the two boys having a chat there. He's reversed that result when he lost a couple of years ago. 6-5. And he's a very popular winner. Barry Hawkins defeats Judd Trump by six frames to four. Great match, boys. Well, <laughs> Barry,